Okay, so the meeting has started. All right, so yeah, I talked with Justin yesterday and I told him just how much to rock. But actually I texted him like probably Tuesday or Wednesday, like just how, how much this rock badger message touched me uh, in the book of Proverbs about a year ago. So I'm excited to do this study on uh, Proverbs 30. There's uh, is it 24 to 28, something like that. Yeah, 24 to 28. So yeah, all right. So we'll just start off reading the scripture verse and then we're just gonna focus on verse 26. And then if you could pull out anything with verse 24 as well, uh, we'll do that. And then we'll do other studies on just focusing on the ants and the locusts and the lizards and spiders, uh, giving all of them their due time you know, once a week. Uh, so, but we're focusing on hyraxes today. And by the way, uh, Justin, um, I think like with the book of Malachi, I think maybe you should just lead the studies. Like if you want to do it anytime soon, like maybe we should just go ahead and get on it. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. But we'll yeah, maybe we can like, if we meet up next week, yeah, well, I think we can like talk more about it for right. sure. Yeah. Right, but yeah, let's go ahead and get to this passage. So, um, so it's Proverbs verse 24. We'll go ahead and read, um, well, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 24 to 28. We'll go ahead and read all those verses. And we'll just focus on verse 26. So, mm -hmm. Maya, can you read? See, I can. All right, thanks. Four things on earth are small, yet they are extremely wise. Ants are creatures of little strength, yet they store up their food in the summer. Hyraxes are creatures of little power, yet they make their home in the crags. Locusts have no king, yet they advance together in ranks. A lizard can be caught with the hand, yet it's found in king's palaces. All right, so I'll start off with prayer. Father, thank you just so much for just how you may study in the Bible. It's a privilege and honor just be able to study your word with the saints and fellowship about your goodness and all your truth and all the wisdom and insight, motivation, all the guidance you're trying to give us through life. So thank you just how you created everything. We're excited to just uh, bask in your glory and bask in your creation through this text, Father. So we praise you for that. And we're excited just to feed on each other's uh, knowledge and uh, insight that we gain from your word together wow so bless this study and have your way oh lord and just not pray man mm -hmm. all right so yeah mm -hmm. so justin did you get to look up any facts on hyraxes at all the rock badgers a little bit okay. like, um yeah I, the other thing like the uh <laughs> I have to look them up a little bit more. And it is interesting because it's, what's a good word for, word for them? Like maybe like moxie, because they have like a lot of predators, a mm -hmm. lot of things just going out for them, a lot of things that are just against them out in the world. But they, they're really scrappy and they like make their own place in the world, right. which is, I find really interesting. That was the thing that stuck out to me. Okay. What do you know about them? Man, I wrote down at least 13 facts, really probably like 16. So I, I, I got a lot, man. Cause like, I've been letting this melanate in my spirit for a long time. Like I've been wanting to do a study on it and just do videos on it on YouTube and stuff. But I just been letting it sit. I haven't had time to get to it, but my dad mm -hmm. wanted me to do a five minute sermon two weeks ago now. And this was the best one for me to do in five minutes. However, now I got it at 12 pages. So this ain't no five minute sermon no more. <laughs> but yeah, man, like too much stuff, I think. Right, right. But I like I like what you said, like with hyraxes, man, because uh, well, first of all, people use the there's different names for conies and hyraxes, rock badgers, and those are some of the names, like Cephanin, rock rabbits, uh, the Septuagin and the Latin versions of the Bible call them mountain mouses and hedgehogs. Hedgehogs, 
And then also we mm. know that they look like, have y'all seen what they look like yet? Like, have y'all looked up what they look like? Yeah. That's what I'm looking Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So everybody always said they look like guinea pigs, but fatter and rabbits, and and they look like rats. <laughs> so, <laughs> but actually, fun fact, they're more like associated in closer closer re- relations with elephants and rhinoceros. Rhinoceros. Really? Yeah. And it's on. They only like put them in that boat because of the thickness of their skin, which is crazy. Because like if they're preyed on by everything and they're easy, easy, you know, food. Why is their why yeah. is their skin so thick? So that's what makes them. Uh, it's called a pachyderm. That's the term for them. So pachyderm. So paca. If you split up the word, paca means think. I mean thick, and then derma means skin. So they're thick skin, right? And that's so powerful. It's like this is why God said, you know, there's little things in the world, but they're exceedingly wise. Like these little things in life have significance. Like they're thick skin. So even though life's hard for them even though they're easy prey, like easy, even though they can't fend for themselves and they're not cool like other animals, like they, like literally like hyraxes have no teeth, like, and they have no claws, like they have nails instead. That is crazy. Like <laughs> they have small ears, no tail, little feet, and their legs are sh- so short that uh, it makes, they can't run, right? They're not fast. Like, so like, man, it's, they can't really outrun any, any animal, like, at least a rabbit can outrun, you know, its prey or like, uh, what mm-hmm. are the antelopes and stuff? Like, look real fast, cantaloupe, you know, what I'm talking about like, don't fast animals, like, nah, mm-hmm. not, not a uh, hyrax, man. So they can't fight back. Like, they have, you know, what are they mm-hmm. gonna do? Bite? Like, they can't bite. So <laughs> they got weak teeth, right? So, like, yeah, they have nothing in their biology makeup to like fend off against other animals when they do attack. But like, they're good at one thing. So, like, yeah, man. So, yeah, so that's one thing I want, wanted to like point out. Like when I do my uh, the the sermon and stuff about it, I'm just gonna talk about life. Like you know how life can be you know hard sometimes. It can seem like it's not fair and stuff, and it doesn't go your way. But like the Coney's are a good example of that. Like life doesn't go their way. Like you think they would have picked to be easy pickings for all <laughs> animals to like take and eat out. <laughs> and like that's you know, a lot of us. We don't choose. We wouldn't choose a cir- the circumstances that we find in our life and stuff like that. But like, there's a solution for the solutions that we do have. And there's a solution for the the, co- the Coonies, the uh, Rock Badger. And we'll talk about that later. But yeah, do y'all want to know some of the facts or y'all got something else y'all want to say? No, I do want to hear the facts, but I feel like the name, just the name where it means like thick skinned adds a whole nother level to it that right. I didn't know about yeah. because like, uh, I don't know, just the development of animals, like the microevolution of like different species is pretty amazing because the, the conies could have gone in any direction. But like this is the direction God had for them to be thick skinned. Yeah. And I think it's pretty amazing because that is a great analogy of what we need to be against the world. Like the, to be pure doesn't mean that... Uh, doesn't mean that we never see anything that's um, corrupted or anything that, that would be bad for us. It means that affected by those things. It would show things in the world that would corrupt us. And I feel like being thick skinned is such a good lesson in this passage. Like, uh, so. right. Now, what are some other facts we have to? Yeah, I'll tell you about them. It's what's going on with your video though? Like, is it happening on your end too, Maya? Uh, it's oh, is it goodbye? Like hard to hear. Like oh, you just really? go, you, oh, okay. You go in and out every once in a while. Like, oh, it's, it's, oh sorry. It's like, uh, I didn't even notice because your guys' video is mine. Fine. Oh, okay. Me. Is, some, is somebody like texting you? No. Oh, okay. I'm uh I'm checking. Just, uh, maybe I'll just see if I can restart the Wi-Fi real fast. Okay. You want me to just go ahead and start saying all the facts while you do that? Hey, can you guys hear me all right now? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Hopefully, it doesn't like it's just glitching. Like every once in a while, when you talk, like it glitches while you talk, so we can't like. 
we can't like that's put together what you're saying sometimes yeah yeah it's not that bad though like i mean it's bad when it happens but it doesn't keep on going <laughs> yeah i'll be sure to speak more clearly though just in case all right cool i mean you speak, you speak clear enough man it's not you the problem is not you all right yeah. so y'all ready to do this man so here goes some facts all right so y'all stop y'all want to add anything so um they grow up to be two feet in width and they weigh only 10 pounds uh one hebrew word for conies is hiders because they make their homes in and hide in the rocks so we talked to, we're going to talk about that later so conies you know they're little but wise tiny but talented which means they're smart so they live in colonies of 50 to 60 so and they're really social creatures so, and then what they do also is they warm each other up because they stay close to one another so that's how they stay warm and that's powerful for us to the life of vacation while god said go to the coney go to the ant go to anything in the bible talk about the lion like they all have significance animals aren't just here for any random reason like they're here to teach us a lesson and apply that lesson so one of the reasons why conies are here they live in colonies of 50 right social creatures they warm each other up so you can come to church cold but you can leave on fire right when you spend time with each other so we all have weaknesses and stuff but our strengths when we work together our strengths cast, cast out and offset our weaknesses so that's why it's important for us to draw close to each other and warm each other up right so that's that's one thing another fact is they blend in with the rocks so wherever they're at they're going to blend in with the rocks that they that they that they live at and that's powerful because we're called to look like jesus right jesus is the rock right so the more time you spend with god the more you're going to look like him so here goes some quotes you know the more you go to the scriptures the more you get out of it but then also the only the only way you can be saturated with the thoughts of Christ is to saturate yourself with the book that is all about him. And then your Christian life will grow no further than the intake of the word of God. So like there's a lot of scripture verses to talk about with that. I'm not going to read them off, but I mean, we know abide in me and I and I in you. And, uh, you know, what well, you won't bear any fruit if you're not attached to my branch. You know, you won't if you don't abide in me, you know, so that's John 15 for and then be an imitator of God, you know. Uh, that's Ephesians 5 1 so that the world can know whose child you are so yeah that's, that's how the hierarchs also uh, relates to the Christian life and everything then something else is they keep lookout so when one of them runs all of them runs because they sit higher than all other animals they're high on a rock so a lot of times they sit so high on the on the rocks that they live at that they uh you know I'm gonna go ahead and skip to it I'm gonna just get to the good stuff they live so high up that other animals can't elevate that high because it's too much, uh, they're too high in the, in the air. You know how when an eagle flies, it's too high for a lot of animals to breathe and live? It's the same mm -hmm. thing with hyraxes. Like they, it says like one, one of the things that they do, they have the ability to climb up 90 degree slopes. So anything really steep, they could, they could climb up it because they plant their feet so well on rocks. Like it's literally like they stick to it. So they stay planted on it. Like, <laughs> so how many scripture verses have you heard? Like, stay planted to the rock and stuff like that. Like, one of them is Psalms 92, 12 through 15. It says, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the course of our God. Like, just that part right there. Like, if you stay planted in the house of the Lord, so you stay planted on the rock, you'll flourish in the course of God. You'll flourish, you know, wherever his presence is. Like, they stay on the rock. So they, they, so they stay and they stay planted on it. They flourish, you know, so they may not be, uh, they may be feeble and can't fend for themselves and all that stuff, but if they stay close to the rock, which I'll get into in a minute, then they, you know, they have protection from their enemies and stuff. Then they set higher. So I'm going to talk about that later too, but I'm going to finish off that scripture verse. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there are no unrighteousness in him so yeah all right and then something else too is they make a particular sound sounding to everyone let everyone know that this is their dwelling place and they're proud of living on the rocks so they, that's how they communicate as well remember i said that they were social creatures so that's that's just talking about evangelizing talking about how awesome it is to be a child of god and being in christ man he's too good like we got a good up here so even though life's hard for them and everything they still think that they got it good because they found their dwelling place mm -hmm. in the rock. Like, I'm, man, we're about to tear this up, man. Like, we haven't even gone anywhere yet. 
And so then also they stay fully charged and they stayed uh, renewing their strength because they like to, uh, they like to, they start their day off basking in the sun. So, and they start to, and when they bask in the sun, they just lie on a rock without moving and they do it for a while. That's how they start off every single day, right? So they start off every single day charging up themselves until they are fully charged and renew their strength. Like, how many scripture verses is that, man? Like, come on, man. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary, weary, and they will walk and not be faint. You know, Isaiah 40, 31. And then also we know that Jesus, even himself, you know, he charged himself up daily, morning and evening. Like, there's a lot of scripture verses that say, you know, after Jesus spoke to the crowd, he went alone to pray. You know, even in the garden, it's just, it gets into me. You know, his friends, he wanted them to pray with him, but he had to pray alone. Like, you know, so he before he did anything, he prayed. He renewed his strength, like the Lord's his strength, right? So, mm. man, that's what they did in the sun. Like, they basked in the sun and did that, man. Like, that is so crazy. All right, so then also, this is this is about to get crazy. These are the best facts, right? So every single day, did y'all want to say anything? I do want to say something oh, okay. real fast about the crag. Okay. Just because when I was like, a, I only say that because you were talking about it earlier. When I was reading it, I was kind of wondering, I was trying to figure out why God wanted us to be like the Tyrax. And I was saw that they mentioned the crag. It makes me think of like the verses of that parable of the man who built his house on the sand and the man who built his house on like um, rock. It's like, what kind of foundation do you want to build your house on? Like the crags are not an easy place for the um, hyraxes to live. Like that's a tough place to make out their home. Mm -hmm. But because it's so difficult, that actually keeps other animals away. Right. Like they're they they built that foundation for themselves. They've owned it so that they're able to live on that as well. And mm -hmm. I think that's like very. I think that's important to note, just because it's not an easy life. But that's like the that's like the tough life the hyraxes have taken on. Right. And I think they're, they are, even though they don't have power, as the scripture says, they're stronger for it in a different way. Mm, yeah. I'm going to keep on going with the facts. So, mm -hmm. All right. So every single day, they're running for their lives, obviously. But don't mean so weak with people. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so every single day, like, they could be another animal's dinner plate, right? So... I mean, that's all they do. They live their life like running from the enemy. But doesn't that sound like Christians, man? Like every single moment of every mm. single day, like Satan is looking to devour, just looking for people who he, he can just devour. Like he's looking for people who he can cause to stumble. And the Bible says, be vigilant and sober minded. And like literally, that's all the Coney does. They're vigilant and sober minded. Like if you're that weak and that feeble, you got to be aware of your surroundings. Mm. And that's what they are. Like, they sit so high up. They have a different perspective on life. They sit on the rock to where they can see all their enemies. The only enemy they really can't see is the eagle, but they can still see it because God gave them two eyelids, right? I'm going to talk about this. So eagles, when they're flying down to get their prey, first they go over the sun because, you know, they, they soar up in the air. So first they're hovering over the sun. Then they come down on the sun to where, like, they're right underneath the 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 uh, underneath the sun, technically, yeah. and like that's, yeah. they're, they're so disguising they themselves, right? They can't see, it. right? Yeah, so where like their their prey can't see anything, so they're blinded by the sun, right? So like you get it, right? But God gave the hyraxes, so conies, rock badgers, He gave them two eyelids, to where like whenever mm -hmm. they're looking into the sun, they can look into the sun without being blinded. So they're not fooled by what the eagle's doing. They can see the eagle. Even though the eagle's trying to disguise itself to get some food, nah, you're not fooling the coney. Like, <laughs> the coney knows exactly what you're doing. He can see you. You can't blind him. <laughs> so as Christians, man, like, that goes to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, you know, uh, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. You know, we are familiar with his evil schemes. So, you know, unless you want to be outsmarted by him, unless you want to be taken advantage by him, you know, you got to pay attention to stuff like this. So, yeah, like, Ponies yeah. and rock batters, man. Yeah, they're wise, man. Like, so go ahead. Were you going to say something, Justin? I don't know. I was just agreeing with you. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then something else, too. This is cool, too. Rock, rock badgers are really independent. So, like, as soon as a rock badger gives birth, um, the child stays with their mother for only an hour. Like, that's it. Like, so they, they uh, get. That's 
amazing. Yeah, they get all the milk they need in just an hour. And then after that, they're mm-hmm. just roaming on a rock, just like all the rest of the companies. So, like, that is so powerful from a Christian perspective because, you know, that mm-hmm. goes back to the scripture verse, you know, train up the child in a way that he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it, right? Like, I'm going to talk about it later, but, like, the baby conies, even when they're babies, they know that they have a relationship with the rocks. Like, we need to depend mm-hmm. on the, ro- the rock. We need to rely on the mm-hmm. rocks. Like, we know that our refuge and safety and protection comes from the rocks. Like, this is our strong tower, so we're staying here. Like, they know their advantage already. They were taught just, just from coming into the womb. Like, you know, what I got to offer to this world. Like, you know, so, <laughs> so they're real humble. Mm-hmm. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But, yeah, man, that's so many scripture verses as well. Like, Deuteronomy 6, verse 6 through 7 says, These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road when you lie down and when you get up like this is literally what the conies do man so you know and that's just for like people who are parents man here go a question like how many of your children have their own relationship with jesus like these conies these baby conies have their own relationship with the rocks like they know to depend on the rocks so like a lot of people like i used to base my faith on you know my dad being a pastor his dad being a pastor my mom's dad being a pastor a lot of my mom's siblings being pastors, so like I'm, I'm going, I'm bound for the promised land just because they're pastors. But no, God's gonna judge everybody, you know, independently by themselves. Like doesn't matter who your mom and dad is, what even what you did and what they did, it don't matter. It matters about your relationship with Jesus. So we're gonna talk about that as well. But yeah, man, like there's so much about the rock badge. I, I got a little bit more facts, but I'm gonna wait to get to it because it all ties in with the rocks. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to the rocks. But yeah, did y'all have anything y'all want to add? Not too much. Like the other notes that I had was just like the community of the hierarchies because you were said they say for like the ants. Like ants are crazy, man. They live in like colony millions of ants and not like a specialized purpose. But at this point, like the locusts, it was but they advance in their ranks. Like the just the fact that they stick together, that one that as you were saying, like one of them is like the lookout, one of them is like burying burrowing for new homes. Like all of them are specialized, like all the animals that God has mentioned. It really shows that no man is an island. Like where two or three are together, there I am with them. Like God wants community. God shows through nature that in order to survive, we need like other people. Like, you can survive by yourself, but, like, it's not a, um, not really a redeeming life, I think. Yeah. Like, it's not a satisfying life. Yeah. And you also might not survive as long as, like, the hierarchies will prove. But just the fact that God names, like, three of these four animals are animals that gather or group together, I think is very powerful and it's really important to show that we need people as well. Yeah. So yeah, like like we were trying to say earlier, man, you know, um, yeah, the Hyraxes, Conies, you know, they know that they're small in strength, you know, in their size, you know, they know that they're helpless and they're hopeless. So this is for, you know, just for our application, you know, we're small as well. We got little strength, like no matter how strong you are, you're not, there's always a bigger fish in the sea, you know, like, <laughs> you're not the strongest, like, especially as humans, like, I think about it all the time, Justin, like, if I was put in an environment, like, in the sea, and to fend for myself in the sea, do I stand a chance, you know, or in the forest, do I stand a chance, you know, like, no, not as a human, like, you can only go so far, yet, yes, we're smart with our weaponry and stuff, I think animals fear us a little bit, but at the end of the day, man, like, you can't depend on your own strength and your own power, I mean, your own power, and like you're incapable of some of life challenges and temptations, right? So, like, we're all nothing without God's strength, and we all need the rock. And that's literally what Proverbs 30, verse 24 says, you know. Um, I'm going to read all of it, you know, because I don't think I read it at all at the beginning. Yeah, so verse. 26, it says, Hyraxes are creatures of little power, yet they make their home in the cracks, right? So 
They're little creatures, yet they make their home in the cracks. That yet part is so powerful. And there goes one of the facts I have for you guys. Hyraxes, they don't travel more than 150 feet from where they live, right? And where they live is the surprising and wise thing about them. Like we've been trying to say the whole time leading up to this, you know, they understand they can't get too far from the rocks because if they do, they become too vulnerable. You know, they have no means of help. They become too exposed and they're all on their own, right? So like... <laughs> They know they're so wise that they know, like, we have to rely on the rocks, man. And, like, that goes back to a scripture verse. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and read it because I know I'm probably not gonna read it. It's probably it's Psalms 104 18. So, Hyraxes, Coney's Rock Badgers, they're all mentioned in the Bible a few times. Uh, and one of the times the Psalms 104 18 says, The high mountains belong to wild ghosts, but the cracks are a refuge for the Hyrax. That is so powerful because there's so many scripture verses. That's talking about this. So God is you are is using these little creatures, like verse 24 says, four things on earth are small, yet they are extremely wise. And Solomon, the man who asked God for wisdom, God said, I give you anything. What do you want? He said, I want wisdom, man. Like life speaks in so many ways to us. It's speaking to us all the time. And like I want I want to ask you guys, like, what are some ways that um God speaks through creation, like every single day. Like, what are the littlest ways? Because, like, I feel like it goes over a lot of people's heads. You know, like they don't really pay attention to the little things that that God's trying to give a, a revelation on, us, to give you motivation or hope for. You know what I'm saying? Well, through. So, yeah, man. Like, did y'all have anything? Do you have anything, Maya? No. I was going to say like caterpillars. I did that before in Sunday school. <laughs> I talked about caterpillars, how God speaks through caterpillars. Then in the Bible, it says go to the ant. Now, I always use track as an example, you know, sports, even eagles, like, but animal planet, man, animal planet, just learn about lions or anything, man. The list goes on, right? About like the simple things in life, how it speaks to us. And like, that's, that's so many scripture verses, man. But like, one of the titles I was going to have for the lesson was like little creatures with a big message. And like, that's the thing. Little God is speaking through all creation. And he's trying to give us everything we need through creation. <laughs> and he's giving, he's just telling of himself through creation as well. So like, that's a lot of scripture verses. I'm not going to read them, but I'll say that for like when I do my sermon thing, but yeah, man. Yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna talk about the rocks in a minute, but I'm gonna I'll wait. Justin, did you have anything else? Oh, he's probably talking. Were you talking the whole time? Hey, can hey, you hear me? Yeah, were you yeah. talking the whole time? No, sorry. My phone suddenly said. It's overheating and needed to cool down before I could use it again. Oh, oh that was crazy. That's never happened to me before. You got a lot of tabs open on your phone? No, I don't oh. think so. Okay. I think I, I'm using a new charger though, so I wonder if it has to do with that. I don't know. That's never happened before. Oh, are you on 100%? Yeah. No, I'm not. It'll, it'll last me though. I, oh, I just okay. won't. Put in, plug in the charger. Sorry about that, man. No, you're good. That's probably what it was. What man. I, think saying? I think that's what it was. I was asking, like, do y'all have any examples of um, just everyday life, like how God speaks through creation? Like, I use the ants as an example, caterpillars, mm. stuff like that. Like, just simple things, right? That God's speaking every single day, trying to just, you know, give glory to himself or give us revelation for this life and stuff. I mean, for me, it's like trees okay. because... I feel like uh, trees, like we, if you think about it, the fact that we're alive on this planet is like nothing short of a miracle because everything's like so harmonious. We, our planet is just the right distance from the sun, not to burn in a gl blaze of glory or freeze to death. Um, and we're like perfectly balanced. Like creation has developed with humans in which we give trees carbon dioxide and the trees give back to us oxygen that we can like live in that kind of harmony mm -hmm. and it's like we don't see it so we take it for granted but that stuff is happening all the time like we live in a perfect 
harmonious atmosphere or environment for people to actually live in. Right. And like to me, like that's that just speaks volumes that there has to be a creator. Mm-hmm. Like if nothing else, like that shows that um, creation was made by outside hands. Yeah, something else I was gonna say too, man. Like I'm gonna focus on the rocks, I think now. But yeah, um, yeah, it's just so much with this. Yeah, let's focus on the rock. So like, there's a lot of scripture verses hit on just how Jesus is the rock, right? And like the whole mm-hmm. point of the God saying go to the conies and pay attention to them. They're exceedingly wise. Like He's trying to tell us this message and like. One of them, just, just to hit the nail on the head, is Psalm 61, verse 2 through 4. It says, from the ends of the earth, I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Like, this is what David is saying. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Like, there's a perspective of life that you don't have, that you need to have. If you have the wrong perspective of life, you're going to you're gonna be in the wrong places doing the wrong things. You're going to be missing things that God wants for you, right? So you got to take the higher ground in life. The higher perspective, God's plan or no plan. God's plan is bigger than my plans, bigger than your plans, bigger than everybody's purposes, right? So, like, you take the higher perspective and you lean on the rock, man, you're going to find this. Verse 3, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against my foe. I long to dwell in your tent forever and take refuge in the shelter of your wings. Like, God can protect us, but we got to be where he is to be protected, right? So, Psalms 32, 7 says, thou art my hiding place, man. The conies hide from their enemies. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Thou shalt preserve mm-hmm. me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Like, I know there's a lot of tales, a lot of stories that a cony could tell that they could talk. Just talking about all the times mm-hmm. they've been delivered from the enemies that wanted to hurt them just because they stayed in the cracks of the rock. You know, so, like, <laughs> so it's crazy, man. So, like, you know, even though hyraxes can't um, fight back, they have no weaponry in their biological makeup and they can barely run away from their enemies. Like, you know, they find their security, their, sa- their safety, power, strength in the rocks, right? So again, like our application here is this, like Psalms 18 verse two, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Man, that is so powerful. Like this is literally the Coney's life. This is all they do. Their foundation, and fortification is built on the rock, right? That should be us. Like foundation is identity, all your being, everything you base life on should be on the rock, right? Like that's literally the their dwelling place is the rocks. Like that's where they stay. I don't even think I read that. You're my hiding place, basically. My dwelling place where I stay at is in the rocks, right? So from a crony's perspective, you know, we learn how to position ourselves in this life, right? So this is the whole point why it's in the Bible, man. So when snakes of life try to, you know, attack the conies, when the bears try to attack the conies, you know, when lions try to slaughter them, like they stay in the cracks of the rock. That's all they do. They just run to the cracks of the rocks. And when they do that, no enemy can lay a hand on them. Like they're too tight in the cracks for anybody to put their hands in, even hunters. Like it said that one of the facts about conies again is hunters don't even chase after them no more. Hunters just always try to get conies but like they can't once they go into the cracks. So not even human beings can get to a coney, right? That is so crazy to me, man. So in order for predators to be able to get to you, they have to go through the rock, right? So this is what God's trying to teach us, man. Like, so did y'all have anything else before I, I uh, say anything else? I do like that, um, I guess I do like this lesson because it's very humbling as well. Right. Like a lot of times people will say it's better to die as a lion than live as a lamb. Which there's some truth to that. You want to live a life that's powerful and meaningful. But I think God's also speaking that we have to protect ourselves as well because we are not, like God is the strongest being out there. But like in this broken world with all kinds of enemies, like more often than not, we're the prey instead of the predators. Like when Jesus was talking to us, he, um, and we're, we're never referred to as the strongest creatures. We're always referred to as like, uh, doves or lambs yeah. and he's saying like look out for the serpents and the wolves out in this world like we're unfortunately not the head honchos because like um god god is the ruler of 
all creation, but we have to remember like um, the devil kind of has a tight leash on around this world as well that we have to like be careful about. Yeah. So even though we want to live as lions sometimes, we have to be sure that we're smart enough like the Hyrax or the Conies that we that we live long enough to make an impact in this world. Right. Yeah. And that's, that, I missed that point, man. Like the biggest point for the Hyrax and Coney's rock badgers that we should learn is, is like, like you were saying, like we got to know our strength as human beings mm -hmm. and we got to know our weaknesses. Like, mm -hmm. and like the more humble you are, the further you'll go. Like, <laughs> so like <laughs> you got to know what you're good at and know and focus on that. Like if you mm -hmm. focus on what you're not good at, how far can you go in life right so like do you realize your weaknesses and do you realize where your security lies so like the coney does and like as human beings we have to that's like the first thing like there's so many scripture verses where jesus is like you know there's a process like second chronicles 7 14 i should really look it up but it starts off saying humble yourself like Matthew 16, 24, it starts off humble yourself, right? Like that's the first thing. And like Proverbs 29, 23, it says a man's pride will bring him low, but a humble spirit will obtain honor. Man, like conies are humble folk. Like they're humble people. And it literally say folk in the Bible. Like these are humble people, man. Weak, feeble people, folk, right? And like Proverbs 22, 4 says the reward of humility and fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. Like, Conies have a long life and they have a good life because they rely, they're humble and they rely on the cracks. They rely on the rocks. They don't go too far from it. I don't know if I said that. Did I say that they only go like 25 feet away from where they live? Yeah. 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 You said something like that. Yeah, man. So like they're real humble. I mean, y'all know y'all know all the humble Bible verses. So I'm not gonna do all, do all that. But but yeah, like I was trying to say earlier, man, like with the Conies, man, here goes uh, a point I want to make. If your foundation is solid. And if your fortification is solid, your enemy and adversary, <laughs> they're going to find lunch somewhere else, right? <laughs> so, so they can't do anything against you because they have to go through the rock to get to you. Like everybody wants to fight their own battles in the flesh, but God is telling us to yeah. fight it spiritually, right? And like, I'm gonna just go ahead and do it, man. Like I had a, a PowerPoint presentation that I'm gonna yeah. show for uh, tomorrow. I'll go ahead and show you guys, man. I'm gonna show you guys. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Like, it's what one... is it on? Is it on the your research on IRX? Yeah, yeah, it is actually. Okay. Like, yeah. So this is like practicing for me. Like, I'm gonna try to share my screen. If I can. Yeah. One point I really didn't make is just talking about eagles, right? Like, can y'all see my screen? Mm-hmm. All right. So one of yeah, one of the points, Justin, are you still there? Yeah. All right, cool. So one of the points I wanted to make was just talking about eagles. This is not an eagle. <laughs> These are high rises. All right. So yeah, this point right here. Like, I've always seen this image right here. Have y'all ever seen this image? Right here. Hmm. Oh. Of, uh, I've seen similar images to it, yeah. Okay, well, basically it's saying, um, you know, let me go ahead and move that back where I want it before I talk about anything. I gotta get better at sharing my screen on here. I'm used to it doing it on my social media platform, but here I'm just so unorganized. Mm -hmm. So I'm not used to it. All right, but yeah, so like one of the things it says like with here is like, um, an eagle is not going to fight a snake, you know, in, in a snake's comfort zone, right? Like the snake is too strong and too comfortable and familiar and his strength lies where the, you know, being on the ground, right? But, and, and that's not an eagle's strength. An eagle ain't meant to be a pig and wallow in the mud. You know, an eagle ain't meant, to, and there's stories like that, right? Y'all y'all heard like little kid stories about an eagle trying to be a, a pig or a dog like an eagle's good at flying it's good at soaring in the air it's better than any other bird at flying right so if an eagle wants to eat a snake and needs food it's gonna take the snake where the eagle 
Christ's comfort zone is in the spiritual realm, right? <laughs> so, so it doesn't take us fight on the ground and fight, you know, flesh for flesh. No, it's going to take you in the spiritual realm and let God fight your battles, right? So that's what it's talking about. Like, you know, when the eagle flies up in the air and takes the snake up in the air, it the snake has no stamina. It can't breathe up there. It has no power, no balance in the air. It's done for. It can't squeeze or anything because it's going to get all like dizzy, right? So it's useless, weak, and, vi- and vulnerable when it's not on the ground, right? So same thing is true for us, like spiritually. Like if we try to fight battles on our own, like how far can we go? Like we're not going to go that far. But if we fight battles in God's strength, we're going to go pretty far because God's going to do mm-hmm. all the work for us, right? Just like the, with the conies. So um, let me get back to how it was. Y'all don't yeah. see my screen no more, right? Like the- yeah, I shoot, I didn't even make that connection at all either. Because oh. we do live in a very, we do live in a place where we're constantly fighting a spiritual battle. Mm-hmm. I think that's like one of the devil's biggest victories is to kind of allow sin and brokenness to be explained away with um, science. And which, not to say, the science and psychology, not to say that, there's not some truth to like psychological analysis to discover like why we are wounded or why we're in pain, but we kind of depend on that too much and don't realize that we're in a spiritual battle as well. Um, and it's only when we go back to God, when we put on that armor of God that he asked for us to fight these fight, use the proper tools, the proper weapons to fight against the enemy um will we actually be like in the eagle's comfort zone right. yeah. i like that i man i didn't even make that connection yeah with, like the hyraxes <laughs> yeah because the hyrax you remember i said that they sit they sit up higher than any other animal really like they're so uh, mm-hmm. they they can climb up 90 degree slopes which is crazy like i can't 90 degrees like i hate inclines like if i hate it, anything i hate run up inclines but 90 degrees man Heck to the no, like so, and then it's so high up, like so it changes this game, like it knows its strength and it knows its weaknesses, even though it's so small and can't do anything. It's so high up, you can't get to him, right? Like that is so crazy to me. And like, man, I'm about to tear it up, man, because we know that Jesus is the rock, man. Like, keep on saying that, and that's the whole point of this whole lesson, right? So, like, Ephesians two nineteen, first, and yeah. Ephesians 2, verse 19 to 20 says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. And here goes the main part. Verse 20, built on a foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. And then it says in Psalms 118, verse 22, it says, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Man, like, I didn't even know what a cornerstone was. But I knew it was like the first or something. I knew it meant like the first thing, right? But like mm-hmm. they say the cornerstone obviously happens with building of a stone, right? It's the first stone that sets the tone for how the whole entire stone, the whole entire diamond is going to look like. Yeah, because right? everything's lined up with the cornerstone. Right. And if, you, the corner, if you're misaligning with the cornerstone, then it's all going to be jacked up. Right. Everything has to line up with the cornerstone. Right. And that's, that's how you create a foundation. Yeah. And that's what the conies have. They have a foundation. They have a solid foundation on the rocks. Like that's where they built their home. That's where they abide in. That's where they dwell in. They stay there. They always they sleep there. They dwell there. Like they don't move from there. They go 25 feet out, come back. That's it. Like you know so like, that's crazy because like for us, like, is, G- is Jesus supposed to be our chief cornerstone? And so here goes a few questions. What are you building your life on? What are you building your marriage on, your education on, finances on, family on, employment pursuits on? Because if it's not on Jesus, it's not going to last, right? So we got to all make sure we're building our foundation and life on Jesus. And here goes another scripture verse, Psalm 11, verse 3. When the foundations are being destroyed, what can the righteous do? You know? Like, what is your foundation built on? That goes back to what you were saying earlier, Justin. Like, foundation. You know, are you a wise builder or are you a foolish builder? Like, what are you mm. building your house upon? And that goes back to, you know, that's Luke 6, 46 or 49. Y'all want me to read it? I will. But, like, um, 
Also in First Corinthians 3, you remember we talked about it when I lost my Twitter page. <laughs> and, and we talked about how like um, you know, what are you build what are you building upon? Are you building upon Jesus? Why are you doing that thing? Why are you why are you living this life? Why are you doing anything that you do? Is it for Jesus? Because if the foundation is wrong, it's gonna it's gonna really destroy you, it's gonna really be detrimental to you, right? But if your foundation is Jesus, you're gonna be all right when you lose anything. Because all you you know that all you have is Jesus, and oh, that just went back to something else I didn't get to say. Did y'all have anything else? Because <laughs> I'm gonna share my screen again. I don't think I have anything for this now. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys this real quick. You can see my screen now. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. All right, so one of my favorite posts I ever posted is this post right here. So if Jesus is all you all you have, then you have mm -hmm. all you need. So when you got the rock, no matter what happens in life, man, you always have the rock to come back to. So, you, you know, all these people, man, they put their hope in things that don't last, that are temporary, that aren't sustainable. And when you do that, you only get hurt. But when your hope is in Jesus, man, <laughs> is he going to fail you? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> So, man, yeah, I should really read it, man. But I know you guys get what I'm saying. But, Justin, you want to elaborate more, like, on that foundation thing? Because I really want to read the scripture verse so we can, like, pull out from it even more. Yeah, why don't you read it first? Okay. For me, the video. All right, let me stop sharing. Let's figure out where we are. Where is it? Nice one. All right, yeah, so... Scripture verse is Luke chapter 6, verse 47 through 49. And it says, um, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? As everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. They are like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on a rock. <laughs> when the flood came, the torrent struck, so the storm struck that house but could not shake it because it was built well but the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation the moment that the storm struck that house it collapsed and its destruction was complete so like there's one storm in this story and it's the same storm that hits these two houses because and both of these houses are built on two different foundations. So what are you building upon and what's your foundation on? So like a lot of people think they can fend for themselves in this life. That's a bad foundation because that goes back to 1 Corinthians mm. chapter 12, man. Like we just talked about it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. It says, Wherefore I give to you to I give to you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Spirit. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you got the wrong foundation already. If you don't believe that Jesus is Lord, you got the wrong foundation. I was just talking talking with you, Justin. And I told you about my friend, my friend, long lost friend I just met up with. Yeah. And he said that Jesus, yeah. you know, he don't know what to do with Jesus. Like Jesus ain't Lord. You know, he looked at the original Bible text and <laughs> it doesn't add up to who it says Jesus is. But did you go to the word, man? Did you study the word? Like, did you stay in the word? Did you dwell there? Did you bask in the sun and, <laughs> and stay where the rock was to figure out what the rock was like? Or did you go to other books? Like just go outside the, the rocks <laughs> to, to, to understand what the rock is. Like you can't do that. You gotta stay where the rock is. But anyways, yeah, man. Like, and then first Corinthians three, man, like that hits the same thing, man. Like it talks about identity. You know, people associated themselves with Paul, Jesus, Peter, and Apollos, and that's what's their foundation. And Paul was like, Man, like I'm a wise uh I'm a wise master builder. And I laid the foundation because of the grace of God that was given to me. He, the Holy Spirit came upon me, and I built that foundation upon Jesus Christ. So if you don't have Jesus Christ, you're building a foundation upon wood, hay, and stubble that's just gonna that's just gonna blow away when hardships of life or something bad happens in life. But when you build your rocks and your foundation, your identity, and all your being upon Jesus, you're gonna have gold, silver, and precious stones when judgment comes. So like, yeah, man, like this is so crazy. This lesson. Like on so many levels, go it got deeper, you know, just with that. <laughs> so man, like the conies, man, they know their identity, like their identity 
Like, this is a lesson about identity. Who do you define yourself as? Who are you? Because if that's wrong, like, whatever you say, because most people will say, like, I make $80,000 a year. You know, I'm a YouTube influencer. Like, I'm known on YouTube. Or like Michael Jordan, I, only, I can only imagine being Michael Jordan, what I would say. I'm the best basketball player ever. What do you mean who I am? You know who I am. Like, it would be hard. To, the first thing you should say is, you know, I'm a child of God. Like, I'm, I was, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, I'm loved by the Lord. Like, that should be like, the, that should be your identity. That's what the Conies do. Like, the Conies, man, we stay on the rock. Remember I said that one of the facts about them was they praise and they uh, tell the whole world about being on the rock, how awesome it is. Like, they literally are really, uh, you know, they're thankful for it, basically. You get what I'm saying. So, like, yeah, man, like, one, one, one song, there's a lot of songs that reminded me of this whole entire lesson, though. But do you know that song, Who Can I Run To By Escape, in the 90s? <laughs> oh, yeah, I think so. Took me a moment. Yeah. Who can I run to when I need love? Like, so like, man, who can I run to, man? Like the Coney's know who to run to. Do we know who to run to when life is hard, when stuff don't go our way and everything? Man, this lesson was so bad though, man. I loved it so much. Like I've been dying to do it. The 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 start sucked, but yeah, those <laughs> verses make me think of like the other, like a very similar verses as well, where it says, like, uh, follow God's word. A person who doesn't follow his word is like someone who looks in the mirror, turns away, and then forgets what they saw. Right. Like, the Conies, uh, they, as you said, they've got their identity. They've got it down pat. They know where they belong. Like, they learn from their experience. Like, if they were, if they were born and then let go in the world one hour later and they didn't know how to live, if they didn't know how to stay with the rocks, they just forgot what their identity was man they'd be picked off by predators easy but because they know where they're at they know what to do they're able to survive like that even if they're not strong creatures yeah yeah man i, I love i love rock badgers man like honestly <laughs> i want to go on pet one but i know i'll probably get rabies or something yeah, yeah. <laughs> they look so cute man <laughs> The identity makes me think about the ants, though, as too. Yeah. Like, man, uh, I think I told you before, like, I've seen some documentaries on ants that are just wild. Because it's it's so easy to kill an ant. Like, they're so small. Mm -hmm. Like, for their size, they're super strong. But to us, they're, like, weak. But each one has a specialized purpose. Like, it's, it's so crazy. Like, of course, there's a queen ant. There's uh, worker ants. There are guard ants. Mm -hmm. Like... Did you know, like, uh, for some ants, when they're under attack, when their home's under attack, some of them have huge heads that they use to block the holes of their hills so the other ants can get away. Like, their purpose is literally just to be a blockade because they got yeah. huge heads. Yeah. But they know their identity. Right. They, they're not going to, a huge head ant isn't going to be like, hmm, I feel like I'm going to do a like go gather berries or something their mm -hmm. large head is going to slow them down and that's a good way for predators to get, get yeah. to them but no they know their identity they learn like where their place is in the world and they like uh they just find that purpose they own that purpose mm -hmm. and it's like it's just crazy because they they have such short lifespans but they have like a working colony out of that just by knowing what each and every one does yeah So what do you think about the rock badger now? No, I like the rock badger. Man, you, you put up a lot of information I didn't know, and I thought I did a pretty good job on, like, uh, looking through it a little bit. But no, that's, uh, I like the analogies, though, because they're, uh, like, uh, just the ability to live in such a hard place, I think, is something we need to be used to. Because I've been... I don't know, just looking through the news or looking through uh, social media, people will complain about the slightest inconveniences, which you don't want to be taken advantage of. Don't get me wrong, but man, I feel like we need to get some tougher skin mm. like the conies, yeah. for sure, because we yeah. we're, we get pretty soft. Even our faith is soft sometimes, yeah. because like in, in the U.S., it's a blessing and a curse in which we can go to Bible study or church without fear of execution but because of that our faith is like so easy like it's not a big decision for us but for like other countries 
they've got tough skin. They're able to um, endure that persecution or like endure like people trying to kill them. So when they make that choice, it's a big choice for them. Right. Yeah, man. Like I study, I told you I've been studying this for like a year. So like it's always been on my mind to do. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> yeah, man, I just have more time letting it melanate in my spirit and study yeah. even more. Like stu just study stuff I didn't know before. Like because I know there's more facts mm -hmm. about conus, so I try to find everything I could get. <laughs> that's how you got to approach these lessons, man. But like that's that's Proverbs thirty twenty, just Proverbs thirty in general. But like I read it, and then when I read twenty four to twenty eight, man, I was, all the, all of it's powerful. All of Proverbs thirty, but twenty four to twenty eight, man, I was like, man, there's something about this. Like, I know mm. about ants. The lizard part was dope. Like, I'm not even gonna spoil it. And the locust part's even doper. Like, come on, man. Like, so I I, I didn't know about hyraxes when I first read it though. So I was like, mm. yeah, I gotta I gotta study this one. What is that? Like, yeah. Oh, well, it's cool that you got you were connected like that. Yeah. Yeah, man. I like I like detailed stuff like that though, man. Cause like you know, a lot of times stuff just go over our head. Like every moment, every second of your life, yeah. Everywhere you go, like every person you encounter, like it's for a reason. Like even when just ran when I, for example, how many times have you been to the airport, right? And like just random people you walk into or encounter, even like that person you ordered food from that you'll never see again, like ever. Maybe it was for a reason, right? Like maybe that person remembers you and like you did something like in a good way or bad, mm. but it's the little things of life, like the ordinary things, the things that you think are pointless and stupid that have all the meaning in the world. And like, if we just mm. live life like that as Christians, how far could you go? How much could you do for God? If you knew that every single detail of your life has significance mm. and purpose and meaning, and this mm. is what God's doing. Even a rock badger who don't have the Holy spirit, who ain't, made in God's image, who ain't us. Like, we got it good compared to any other creature on earth, right? So like, yeah. <laughs> even them have purpose, purposes. And if they got a purpose, if they could do crazy things with the little wisdom, the little wisdom they got. And the little, they're, they're all little. All the creatures that was listening to Proverbs 30, 24, 28 are all small. Like, they can, like you said, they're easy pickings. The ant can be squashed easily. But man, what do they do? Like, so I'm not even gonna spoil it, man. There's so much with the ant. I don't want to spoil it, like, cause I can only imagine if I spoiled the eye racks for you. <laughs> like, if this lesson would have been boring for you, but. <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I was blessed by this. What do you think, Maya? Really good. Uh, I enjoyed it. I learned some other things from when I wasn't with you while you were studying. Uh huh. Uh huh. Was I listening to sermons when you were with me? Yes. Uh, I guess so. All right. So what do you want to do next, Justin? You want to do locust? You want to do lizard? Uh, oh, gosh, I don't know. Which one? I don't know. Which one are you feeling? Man, I'm, I'm going to do the lizard, man. The lizard spider one. You do this? Okay. I, I was thinking that, too, because I feel like I know the ants in the locusts but lizards i'm gonna have to I'm, I'm gonna have to do the same thing you did with the the hyraxes i'm gonna have to like study up on them yeah. see more about them yeah, yeah let's do the lizard I'd, I'd be down for that all right cool because that already, way that gives me a chance to like actually learn and dig deep into yeah, yeah it's gonna be dope man this one I, I, mm -hmm. I really hope this lesson was awful though like i know i got it got better it's just a start yeah. i gotta i gotta figure out how to do the beginner lessons man <laughs> I just really don't I feel know. Like how to everything build. has to build up though. It's pretty hard to like uh start high right away. Yeah. You can always edit it where it's like <laughs> where it looks like it's like, yeah, like you started out strong. Just right. edit it where you're strong the whole time. Right. Hey, you see, did I talk or talk to you about this yet? Yeah, the twenty nine. Yeah. why do you make it a ninety two though? Well last was yeah. yeah last lesson um it was 92 like two weeks ago last lesson i was like that is so cool because i was born in 92 and i'm oh, 20 okay. and i'm 29 yeah. oh. 
Yeah, that, that actually slipped my mind. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that does work. Yeah, yeah man. So I know everybody's going to be like, why? 92, man. I'm a 90. I was born in 92. Uh, yeah. But I need, these balloons are done for, so I got to. That's why you kept filling them up. I only did it once. My mom and dad did it once for me, so. Oh, okay. I doubt they'll keep on doing it. I mean, they would if I asked, but my uh, sister going to hook me up. But I just need something in the background. Man. I can't just have this white thing no more. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Maya, right? Maya loves me. Something mm-hmm. like that. And then 29. Like, <laughs> something us. We need something up, us up there. Because I'm not doing no more YouTube videos with no background. Mm. Seem like a lame <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you about to go to bed, Justin? Uh, no, I need a. I'm in a church right now. That they're, uh, some of my 